Hello. It has been a great year since I made a video. I am at uh, the terminal in Columbus because Ford made a bumble and never scheduled my delivery. Or at least didn't schedule it for today. So since the place that it was being delivered to is only a mile and a half away from here, they just had me T-call it. So some unlucky soul will get to drive the trailer that I dropped here a mile and a half away to deliver it. I am sure it's going to be like a local person or I don't know how that works. I always wonder about that because they do that in Memphis too. They'll have me deliver to uh, this one Ford place and instead of me delivering it I end up t-calling it at the terminal and it's six miles away from the terminal. So, um, I'm making this video because utter bumbles happened. Um, but it's not going to be as complaining as the first take because I did a take while I was at the place that I was supposed to deliver and I was really whiny and complaining and lame and stupid so like, it wasn't awful but it could have been a lot better and less pathetic so first of all I haven't made a video in about forever um, there will be a video going up of a critical event that I had that wasn't actually a critical event that I think got thrown out because I never heard anything about it uh, after making my call to explain how it happened so, uh, that video will go up, and, uh, my brain just broke. Uh, oh, so right, the incompetent bumbles, right? I went on, I went on home time over the weekend, and, uh, there's a truck driving by, so it's gonna be loud, and I don't know if I can talk over it. Uh. There it goes. I think that's the guy who was asking me where row 6 was, so it looks like he found his trailer. That's good. Um, okay, so, incompetent bumbles. First of all, I requested home time to start on Friday of last week. Um, they planned me so that I wasn't actually home until 10 p.m. on Friday. Well, actually, it was, it was more like, like home home. I got home around 10. I got to the terminal like 8 something and then I had to put the truck in the shop because of the mud flap thing and uh, like the bracket not the actual mud flap or I would have fixed it myself. Um, and then you know I had to bumble around with some stuff so by the time I got home it was 10 on Friday. And the thing is they had already pre-planned me on a thing uh, on Monday at 6 a.m. So instead of having like three days of home time like I wanted, I had two. It was barely two because Sunday night I had to go back to the terminal because I knew I'd have to go in and try to get an empty at like four in the morning. Because there's never any empties at the new Boston terminal because everybody steals all the trailers and takes them out of state and never brings them back. And that's why the last time I went home they kind of yelled at me because I didn't bring an empty back. From here, pretty much. Because um, they have plenty here. But... Um, main point is, I didn't have as much home time as I wanted, then they planned me on this thing, it was supposed to be from Toledo to, uh, Tappan, New York, which is, it's a good, you know, I do that one quite a bit, and, uh, it's nice, it's super lazy, because, um, the place in Tappan, they, uh, they don't have you back into a spot, there's a little, like, yellow rectangle on the ground, and you put your trailer inside of it, and then the switcher guy takes or he brings you an empty and then once you uncouple from the loaded trailer while you're hooking up to the empty one he takes the loaded one away so you don't even have to back into anything so that's kinda cool um, if you're lazy or not good at backing which I'm mostly just lazy I'm usually good at backing um, so I get to the place in Toledo and they're like well we don't have any loads going to happen they all got picked up over the weekend so I call Swift and they're like well we'll figure out what's going on uh, they Qualcomm messaged me and they're like, it got double booked by the shipper. So that place sent two different, wanted two different drivers to come pick up the same load. And I was the unlucky one that, uh, didn't get it. So, um, I could have obviously, you know, stayed home that night, gone to bed at a normal time, woke up at a normal time, all that kind of good stuff. So they planned me on a thing out of Brownstown, Michigan. So I drive up there, pick it up, two hours after. Um, so I wasted more time on the way up there. I had to sit at a rest area for like an hour. Um, 
and then it didn't deliver until today at 1. So the only good thing is I um, I called my uh, driver leader and I said, hey, uh, you know, this load is only going like four hours away and they gave me forever to do it. Can I just like park at the terminal, go home again for the rest of the day and then pick it up in the morning again and, you know, bring it? And she's like, yeah, as long as you deliver on time. So um, I went home again. I went home for like a whole extra day. And I got my car registered and got some other little stuff done. Went to bed at a reasonable time. Woke up this morning at a reasonable time. So that all worked out good. But then I got to the place to deliver it. And you're not on the schedule. So there's just been a few, like, kind of dumb things going on. Because that same place in Toledo messed something up. Well, or I don't know who messed up the other one. But they told me, you know, go pick this up at 1030 to noon. Sometime in there. I get there at like 11 and they're like well that load isn't supposed to be picked up till monday and the information i had said it was supposed to be delivered monday in massachusetts so i had to do the whole call dispatch have them call customer service have someone figure out what's going on and i ended up being able to pick it up like half an hour before the place closed at like three something so whatever you know so there's just been some bumbly garbage going on but um other than that bumbling garbage, there hasn't been much bad. It's all, you know, been getting good miles. Truck's running good. I've put, like, 33,000 miles on it. Um, I just got a CB radio, which is over there. And uh, I haven't really used it. I just set it up here, and there's, like, no one on it, you know, here. So I'll have to see when I actually get out on the road how it does, but... It has a bunch of, like, internal tests, and uh, it passed them all. Like, you know, it tells you, is your antenna strong enough, da 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 So, I've got everything set up right. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, everything, though, has really been pretty good. I mean, I had a flat trailer tire I had to get fixed. I had a trailer light go out. That was actually really, really dumb. Because it wasn't a trailer light. It was seven of them. And you're like, well, how does seven trailer lights go out? Well, they don't. Some incompetent dingus at Great Dane, which is the kind of trailer it was, put a screw for the light bracket through the light wiring. And it apparently worked for a while. And then... <coughs> Ugh, that's annoying. I might have to clip that out. Probably not, though, because I'm lazy. Um, so... That light shorting out on the front upper corner of the trailer, because the screw was through the wiring, made all the marker lights on the back not work. So all three of the top ones, and the two inside of like the hazard light, turn signal light. And also, I think there was, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess it was six, not seven. But either way, there were six marker lights out. And, uh, so I had to get that fixed. But none of those were, because I always found the stuff when I did my post trip. So I was already at a truck stop and I just called on road and I was like, hey, this thing broke. And then they just put it in the shop at exactly, you know, the place I was at. And they fixed it while I was like watching, you know, TV and eating food and taking a shower and sleeping and stuff. So. It never counted as, you know, anything that was a big deal. So, um, that's what's been going on. Uh, I ran into another person from orientation, which was cool. Um, okay, this video is almost ten minutes. So this is the, this will be the last thing. This will be the last thing, I promise. Um, yeah, while I was at the terminal with the thing that I just dropped here. At the New Boston one, because there was no point in me coming here early, so, um, yeah, I parked, and I got out of my truck, and I'm walking to go to my car, and someone's honking, and I'm like, what the heck, why is somebody honking, and they kept honking, obnoxiously, like a ton, so I turn around, and I look, and at first, I didn't recognize the person, because, like, the rearview mirror was obscuring my view, and everything, and they get out, and it's, um, the guy that was my roommate, uh, all through orientation and everything, up until that last like sub week in uh, Gary, Indiana. 
So I hadn't talked to him at all in a really long time. And the reason was that um, I did my CDL test and I texted him and, you know, I was like, yeah, I passed, da, 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 make sure you tell me how you did. And then he texted me back and told me that he didn't, he failed because of the parallel p backing, which I can probably do now, but definitely couldn't do when I was in training. And luckily Michigan doesn't make you do it. Um, so I said, oh, you know, you'll get it next time. Cause he was, he was way better backing than I was. Like he got pretty much everything like on the first day or second day. Whereas I was still afraid I was going to fail like the 90 degree, the last day that I did it, the last day you could possibly test. So when he never texted me back after like a second test or anything, I thought, oh, he must not, you know, something must have happened because he would have, and I didn't want to text him because now it's been, you know, it had been like six months and I'm thinking like, okay, so, he, you know, maybe he didn't make it and I don't want to be weird and be like, hey, you know, did you make it? And then have him be like, no. And it's like, well, you know, that would really stink to bring it up after like six months or whatever. So. I just figured, like, if I ever ran into him, I'd run into him. And then I talked to him, and he was thinking the same thing about me because he hadn't heard from me in so long. And he had forgotten that the last text I sent was, you know, hey, tell me how things went when you go a second time. So um, that's cool. So pretty much, like, the two people that I got along with the best during orientation and training and everything, like, I'm now back in contact with them. Um, so that's cool. Everyone else, I didn't really talk to or anything, and I haven't seen any of them either, but... I made this video really long, probably, but I don't care. I haven't made a video in forever, so watch this video, like, four minutes per week for the next three weeks, and then it'll be like I was consistently making videos. Right? Right.